Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Is America a Christian nation? And are founding documents, including the Constitution, but especially the Declaration of Independence, do our liberties come from God? Dr. Ellen Keyes will explain. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a live interview with a returning guest and fan favorite, Dr. Alan Keyes, is a former United States ambassador and also a former candidate for president of the United States. Welcome from his home via Skype, Dr. Keyes. How are you today, Alan? I'm doing well, how are you? I am so blessed. Um, you know, you're, you're an elder statesman, you're a historian, but you are, the, the, the reason we love you, uh, among many other reasons, uh, is because you have a great affinity and love for God. And, and we try to connect church and state in, in a certain sense of morals and, and righteousness. And, but you do so as, as a student of history from the founding fathers' views of God. Uh, is America a Christian nation? Well, I think it's without doubt that that is so. Uh, when you go back and look at the origins of the country, uh, the understanding that is the bedrock understanding that empowers us as individuals to be part of a body, body politic that is self-governing, right? Uh, we don't have kings, potentates, emperors, conquerors, uh, elites, uh, Davos people, and all these uh, people who are now trying to impose themselves as our masters. And that is re-emerging, isn't it? in the world as an explicit statement. People are unfit to govern themselves. The powerful and the wealthy uh, must govern them instead according to their whims. They want to return us to what is essentially the enslavement of humankind that pretty much characterized government uh, until the United States was founded. But we were founded on a premise that appealed to God for the authority to govern ourselves. And this is why I have been steadfast in trying to remind people that our authority to govern ourselves comes from God. Remove God, and there is no such authority to be ascribed to us, except we can carve it out of the hides of those who, as in the past, will use all the power they can muster to keep us down. And I think that's not become explicit and if you're looking at what goes on in these global forums uh, with Klaus Schwab and all these people who have essentially declared themselves de facto the rulers of the earth, right? Uh, they are now trying to return us to that old way of doing things. And yet, as a people, our sovereignty doesn't rest on their say-so, and it doesn't even rest on the ability to uh, vindicate ourselves in battle, though that was required uh, and, and would still be required if we're going to remain a free people. We take the claim of authority directly from God, uh, and without God, we have no authority. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so the, the founding documents, including the Declaration of Independence, clearly state that we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights. Uh, and you can enumerate those, life, liberty, property, or the pursuit of happiness, or the rights enumerated in the, in the Bill of Rights, right? Uh, in the First Amendment, we think about those. But why are they endowed from our creator? What, what if our rights came from humans or government? What if we could vote people into power that would give us our rights in the first place? Well, first of all, if you vote people into power and they give you rights, then they are the authors of those rights and you have to obey them. Uh, and that's the way government was for and the longest time. And they can take those rights away. Uh, but there was also an understanding of right that unfortunately still wanders about as if it's the understanding in the Declaration when it is not. Right is not simply the freedom to do what you please. That's not the meaning of the word right in the Declaration, and it couldn't be. 
We are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable. What does that mean? It means an understanding of right that you must follow. You cannot give it away. It cannot be as a responsibility taken away. So we think of it as if it's the opportunity to, do, to have freedom and do what we want. No, we have freedom, but we must use that freedom to do what is right according to the laws of nature and of nature's God. When we don't use it to do what is right according to the laws of nature and of nature's God, we are not exercising liberty according to God. We are abandoning the exercise. We are abusing our freedom in order to do something that is not in accord. Uh, with the understand God's understanding of what is right. This is something that I think a lot of people, including people who fancy themselves to be conservatives and so forth, they forget this. They think it's all about our freedom to do whatever we like. No, it's not. Our freedom to do whatever we can sustain by power. No, it's not. That word unalienable means we are subject to a requirement. And oh, we can forget, try to forget about it, but that requirement is not the use of freedom. It's the use of freedom to do what is right according to the will of God. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, we need to take a short break. When we come back, Dr. Ellen Keyes will talk about the founders and their view which led to the Constitution. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. We want you to sign a petition today to stand with Israel. They are under such attack with Arabs and Muslims killing Jews, but here is the Bible territory that God promised to the Israeli and Jewish people. Even in 1993, in the Oslo Accords, Yasser Arafat agreed, these are the current borders of Israel and it's their land. Let's sign that petition, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org, sign it today. Today we are remembering to pray for and commemorate our 45th president, Donald J. Trump, who was, in our generation, perhaps the most pro-life, pro-family, pro-Israel, and pro-America president of our time. To remember him and honor him, we've issued these brand new golden commemorative coins. They have Donald Trump right in the cover, and it says, in God we trust, to remind you to pray for our 45th president. For a suggested donation of $45 to our ministry, we'll remember and send you this 45th president coin. And not just that, we're gonna throw in a copy of my book, How to Liberate the World with the Christian Activist DVD. So you get all three. You have a coin to remember to pray and then to learn how to be an effective Christian activist. You get the book and the DVD and then to show the world your Christian faith, we're gonna add this window decal. It says, I pray for religious freedom. So you can remember to pray, learn, and show the world that you stand with us at Pray In Jesus Name. Please donate today when you visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the bookstore button at the top, and you see all four items for a suggested donation of $45. Or call us right now at 866-ObeyGod get yours today. Need a physical or spiritual healing? Are you being tested or tried? When Jesus needed to pray, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you need to really connect with God? If you're visiting Colorado Springs, come see the Gateway Prayer Garden just south of the city along Interstate 25. Walk our prayer trails among the trees by the beautiful Fountain Creek. Stand at the foot of our large cross and connect with Jesus. Enter our life-size replica of the empty tomb and spend time reading key Bible verses etched in stone along our ground cross as big as a football field. Join our worship gatherings and plan to attend our annual Easter sunrise worship service. We're located off I-25 exit 132A at 8035 Bandley Road, just north of the KOA campground. Experience Jesus at gatewayprayergarden.org. That's gatewayprayergarden.org. defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. 
Our founding fathers wrote the Constitution after you know, 1781, it, it was initiated, I think 91 is finally ratified, different than the Declaration of 1776. Alan, how did our founders put those rights into the Constitution? Well, always remembering that the rights are an articulation of responsibilities, right? Things we're responsible to God to do. That's what the Declaration is about. It states the premise of God's authority as the source of our authority to govern ourselves, so long as we do so within the boundaries of the laws of nature and of nature's God, so long as we make use of that liberty that we have to do what is right according to God. Uh, and that's very explicit in the Declaration of Independence. And it was also very clear, by the way, uh, in the prior commitment of the people who eventually came together uh, to be the thir uh, first 13 colonies and so forth. Uh, they were all of them, when you read either their charters or the laws that they were governed by, they looked to God as the source of their authority to govern and the righteousness of that authority so that you could understand what it was right to do as opposed to what it is wrong to do to other human beings uh, by uh, observing and understanding and applying uh, what God requires. Uh, and they were very steadfast in that. So that bedrock anchor for the very existence of the country, which wasn't perfectly realized, obviously, because they were not perfect beings. Uh, and so in the course of the 19th century, the, the key thing that they had to face was the contravention of the notion we're all created equal and endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. Yes, that notion, which is clear in the declaration, was being contravened by the existence of slavery, for one thing, and, I'll, and, and uh, in the course of time it became, obviously, uh, such a source point uh, in terms of the contradiction between the premises of our authority from God and our abuse of that authority in slavery, uh, that it took a war uh, to uh, bring, bring about a change. Uh, but I think what is to be clear about that is that they were subject to the discipline of God's goodwill from the moment they adopted the Declaration, and you see that in the implementation uh, in the Constitution, uh, since the uh, first things that are taken care of are things that government is required to do in order to maintain steadfastly justice according to God, not just justice according to human whim. Right. The, the Constitution has, obviously, the, the Bill of Rights uh, enumerating many, many human rights that cannot be voted away by 51% of the majority. Uh, among those are, are uh, you know, the right to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly. We, we've talked about many of those on previous shows. <clears throat> but do those rights also come from God? I, when, when the Constitution was written to limit the powers of the federal government, it, th those are things the federal government cannot take away, but in that freedom, we have a responsibility to use our freedom for good. Well, yes, see, I, but, but I think that's because the people who wrote the Declaration understood that it was um, organic law, as they said. Uh, that is the law from which the organic existence of the people of the United States as a nation, as a people, as a whole. It arose from that understanding in the Declaration of the source of our authority to govern ourselves. Uh, and, and I think though it has been severely neglected over the course of the years, as uh, in the course of my lifetime, one of the things I've observed is that our politicos, our polit political leaders, a lot of them, especially the ones, by the way, who follow the leftist, Marxist, Leninist persuasion, they want us to get away from all of that. <laughs> they want it to be simply a matter of power because that's what the Marxist, Leninist believe, right? Uh, and, and once you've got the power, you can then use it uh, in order to impose your will, the will of the vanguard party or whatever they might call themselves. That was not the understanding 
the, that the country was founded on. It's not the basis for our exercise of sovereignty as ordinary human beings. Uh, we uh, are endowed with that access to sovereignty through which we govern ourselves by that premise of God's authority. Uh, and so you remove that premise and it becomes once again a war of all against all in which, by the way, the most ruthless and evil people usually win. Okay, uh, one of our founders, I think it was uh, our second president, John Adams, said that when they signed the Constitution, uh, it was intended to give freedom to the people, but, but it's only fit for a moral and religious people. In other words, people yes, who he, could he govern themselves it right and is totally unfit for the governing of any other kind of people. Any other, that's right. If, if immoral or unjust people were given a democracy, they would destroy themselves. Well, and have. What, what it usually means to destroy yourself when you're a whole people is that you end up putting yourself in a situation where you are subject to the ruthless rule of tyrants of one kind or another. Uh, and I think the saga, not only of humankind, but of our recent experience of the world at large verifies that, doesn't it? Uh, because it is still to this day the case that when you survey the scene uh, for most of, of the uh, 170 or more uh, countries in the world, uh, most countries are under some form of uh, dictatorial tyrannical rule. They are not under some form that allows the people to govern themselves. Uh, and, and, and that is a reflection of what has been true throughout human history until the understanding of our relationship with God, uh, and I would have to put it advisedly, you go back and look at the founding generation, it's the relationship with God through Jesus Christ, isn't it? So you put all those ingredients together and we become a people, individuals, who have the capacity, have a, committed ourselves to the task of doing right according to the will and then through Christ, the example of God. So we have not only the willingness to do so, we have the paradigm uh, that allows us to know how to do it properly. Uh, and that was uh, what was the, the, the sort of governing understanding. Uh, of the people who then uh, conceived of and wrote the Declaration of Independence and turned uh, their uh, themselves over to this form of government in which they are rule, we, we govern ourselves, but according to the example and sovereignty of God. I, I'm at a loss for words. I don't even know how to digest the, the fire hose of truth that we're getting from Dr. Ellen Keyes. More right after this. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I wanna introduce my friend, Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry in the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray in Jesus' Name's ministry. Dr. Chaps here, but this great ministry needs your support and you, can, you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm gonna put them right back into this, into your amazing charity and show. Well, thank you, sir. I accept that endorsement and we support your work at mypillow.com. Remember everybody, when you visit, use the promo code PRAYNEWS, you get a big discount and our charity gets a little bit of help. So thank you, Mike Lindell, for your support. They get a lot of help, a little bit, a lot of help. <laughs> we need all we can get for Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. For a limited time, you get premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, and that's the lowest price in history. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The my pillow topper for the first time has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the my pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. When I got my pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. 
For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, uh, joined again by Dr. Ellen Keyes. When our constitution was signed, one of the signers, one of our founding fathers, Ben Franklin, was asked as he came out of uh, Pennsylvania, uh, the, the Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Mrs. Powell approached him and said, what kind of government have you given us? And he responded, a republic if you can keep it. Mm. Ellen, are we a democracy or a republic? And what's the difference? Uh, well, I, I think the difference is clear in the terminology. Um, if you parse the word democratic, it is a claim by the people based on their kratos, which is uh, uh, the Greek word that uh, is roughly translated uh, a strength, right? Strength or capability, power. Um, so that's a democracy. Uh, Respublic is actually a word that means things that belong to the people, yes? Uh, and yet in the understanding that underlies our form of government, what are our belongings in that sense? They are the things that are articulated in the Declaration of Independence as coming from God and binding upon us. Uh, so they are then a combination of duties uh, and rights, right doings. See, because uh, we have so debased the meaning of the word right that we forget that a right is the, the doing of that which is right according to a standard of right that we do not dictate according to our whims, but instead that we arrive at by uh, considering and trying to implement what is God's goodwill uh, for human beings and toward human beings who do what is right according to the will that in the first place brings us into existence, right? Uh, so you're talking about the, the authority of the one who is the author of our very beings. Um, and I think that this is what guided the United States uh, and I would have to say it, it unequivocally guided it all the way up to and uh, through the Civil War. Uh, and then I think things started to be uh, confronted by realities and ambitions and other kinds of temptations uh, that over the course of the subsequent uh, period uh, have, uh, you know, posed some challenges. So for one our of the distinctions I, I want to try to draw here in our fundamental understanding of different styles of democracy, right? We are not a, a referendum government. We don't you know, hold an election every time someone wants to change a law and oh, 50% of the, of the voters plus one, they made a law together. No, instead we elect representatives who represented us in, in different levels of government. So there's the federal government, we have the Congress, but that's representative of the people and they're the ones who make the laws instead of 50% plus one on every particular issue. Well, uh, but the only uh, addition I'd have is, is, is that representative government means that you are dealing with an individual, say your representative, who is to go and present for you what you would present yourself if you were there, right? So they're not making something up that's different than your will. They are implementing what they can know to be your will because you have made it clear to them. Uh, now, I think that we have as a people strayed somewhat from that understanding of who we are because a lot of times I think we forget that our representatives can't represent something we don't present to them in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Right. So if we don't make it clear what the goals and what the grounds are for what it is they are supposed to do when we're sending them off to represent us at any level of government, 
we are derelict in our duty. Uh, and who is that duty to? See, it's not to ourselves. That's what a lot of people who are trying to, uh, I think, overthrow our form of government are falsely inducing people to believe. We are not the source of right and righteousness. God is the source of right and righteousness. Eliminate God, and what will govern is the ruthless use and abuse of power. Quite right. simply, and, and that's the, what has the, taken place in, in a, other in parts a of democracy. The world. You can't have people vote, for example, 50 50 percent plus one to take away a right that God has given to individuals, sure. and that's why certain rights are enumerated as unalienable. The, the democracy cannot vote, for example, in Ohio, where they recently did vote, to take away the right to life of the unborn. So a child has a right, even though uh, the democracy tried to take it away from them, that right came from God and cannot be overruled. See, and I think that's part of why they have been pushing so hard on the abortion issue, because they realize that if you can seduce people into a position where they are denying the responsibility to God when it comes to respecting God's understanding and origin for human life, right? But if you're doing that in relation to the person in the womb, how are you going to avoid suffering from the consequences when somebody more powerful than you wants to impose that same criteria in order to disregard your life? Uh, or reduce you to a way of life that is incompatible with your obligations to God, but also with the rights that you are called to exercise uh, because of God's authority. Uh, so they're pushing us in a direction that is now being vocally. Uh, I, when you, uh, I hope people do occasionally read some of the stuff, the junk that's coming from these people uh, uh, at these little confabs they have, where where the wealthy mukti mucks get together and decide what the rest of us are going to have to do or suffer according to their whim. Right. This is the utter overthrow of. Uh, what we have been enjoying in America on account of our reverence for God's authority. Somebody said uh, uh, pure democracy is two wolves and one sheep voting on what's gonna be for dinner. The sheep always loses. <laughs> so let's take a, uh, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Uh, Dr. Ellen Keyes is at IAM.TV. Watch his TV show there. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. We need your donations, large or small, to bring you these viewer-sponsored programs can't do it without you, would you please donate today at PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer, pick up the phone and call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.